This is a video for the test review for graphing trig functions in pre-calculus. We're going to start by making our graphs of the parent functions. You can look back at the first day uh, for how we made our graphs. I'm going to start with the quadrantal angle, uh, amplitude of one, and sine is midline, maximum, midline, minimum, midline. Oh, I'm so close, I missed. One more time to try. Close enough. Okay, there we go. Cosine, I'm going to put my quadrantals again. Amplitude. And cosine starts at a maximum to the midline, to the minimum, back to the midline, back to the maximum. And since this is a graph that's bounded above and below, don't go above these maximum points. You have to turn it back around. So for tangent, now we're gonna have asymptotes. And if I think about our circle from our prior unit, Tangent is y over x. So anywhere the x coordinate is zero, tangent will have an asymptote. So that's at negative pi over two, positive pi over two, three pi over two. And we're gonna go through the origin and the tangent graph is increasing. Go through pi. So there's two periods of tangent. While we're on the tangent shape, I'm going to go do my cotangent. So using the same um, circle from our prior unit, I know that cotangent is x over y. So anywhere the y coordinate is zero, cotangent will have an asymptote. So at zero, at pi, at two pi, and then the cotangent graph is decreasing towards these asymptotes with a similar shape as tangent. And voila, there is the cotangent graph. Cosecant, I'm going to build that graph off of its reciprocal, which is sign. So put my quadrantals again. So the sine graph looks like this. Anywhere that sine is an x-intercept or zero, cosecant is going to have an asymptote. And then this maximum point, we're gonna flip that out. The minimum point, we're gonna flip that down towards the asymptote. And then secant, we're gonna build that off the cosine graph. Since secant is the reciprocal of cosine, I should have labeled this one and negative one. And so anywhere that secant has an x-intercept is an asymptote for, sorry, anywhere that cosine has an x-intercept is an asymptote for secant. This point's going to flip up. This one's going to flip down. This one's going to flip up.
So for the periods of all um, of the parent functions, every single graph has a period of two pi except tangent and cotangent. So sine has a period of two pi, cosecant has a period of two pi, so does cosine, so does secant. Tangent and cotangent, they each have periods of pi. For number three, I kind of mentioned this as I made my graph. To sketch the secant function, I'm going to build that off of cosine. To sketch the cotangent, it's kind of like tangent, kind of back to the unit circle. And cosecant is built off of sine. The asymptotes for tangent, let's look back, what did we draw over here? Negative pi over two, pi over two, three pi over two. The amplitude of this function is one half. As a transformation, I know it doesn't ask that, but I'm gonna review it. That's a vertical dilation of a half, but the amplitude is a half. What is the period? So this B value, that's a horizontal dilation of a quarter. The new period is two pi over B. When we divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So we get eight pi over one. So the period is eight pi because of the horizontal dilation of a quarter. The phase shift, that's here, that's to the right, pi over four. And the period is two pi over this B value because there's a horizontal dilation of three. Okay, so specifically reading number eight, write a sine function an amplitude of two, the B value is going to be two pi over the period. That's two. Two to the right is minus, that's a lot of twos, is minus two, and then down three is minus three. Amplitude is three. Amplitude is always positive. So this negative is a reflection over the X axis. That is not part of the amplitude. The phase shift is to the left, pi over four. Vertical shift is down five. And the period is two pi over B, which reduces to pi over two. All right, write an equation for the sinusoidal function. So we can pick sine or cosine, whatever your favorite would be. Amplitude is the maximum minus the minimum divided by two. The midline is maximum plus minimum divided by two. Um, the period is one rotation. I like this maximum. Get back to this maximum in a length of pi. So from zero to pi is a period of pi. So B is two pi over pi is two. Oh no, I didn't mean for that to happen. So now to write my equation, I'm gonna pick cosine because the maximum is at zero, an X value of zero. So I have no phase shift, no horizontal slide, no C value. So 
So here's my amplitude, my B value, and my midline. You can put parentheses here if you like to make it very clear that this is not a horizontal shift. Okay, wow. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is negative seven, negative one, and a four. All right, A, maximum minus minimum divided by two. Midline, maximum plus minimum divided by two. The period. If the wave starts here and ends here, the length between zero to four is four. So the B value is two pi over four, which is pi over two. I'm gonna pick cosine again because the maximum's on the Y axis. So I have no horizontal slide, no phase shift. All right, and then for C, maximum minus minimum divided by two, maximum plus minimum divided by two. Oh, all right, so here's three, here's my midline. Um, for a period, I could go from this maximum back to this maximum, but the X value is not labeled. And I really don't want to do extra work, so I don't want to find those values. I notice I cross my midline at X equals zero, and we get one whole pattern here. So the period is two pi. So my B value is one and this time I'm going to pick sine because the pattern for sine is start on the midline go towards the maximum and that gives me no phase shift so I've got my amplitude my b value my midline All right, a word problem. Matthew is on the beach. And they're telling us some stuff about the tide here. Um, all right, the high tide is 10 feet. The low tide was four feet, so I marked four. And we have 24 hours for our X axis. Um, high tide is at 2 a.m. So here's 2 a.m., 10 feet, four, five, six, six, eight a.m. is low tide. And this is not much of a graph, so I need more points. Between two and eight, is six. So if I go another six in this direction, so here, that's 14, I labeled that right. We're gonna get a maximum high tide again. Then I'm gonna go another six to 20. That's gonna be a low tide. Then well, another six is off my graph. I'm going to connect the dot. And fill up the whole grid. And write an equation. Max minus min divided by two. Maximum plus minimum divided by two.
And then for the period, we're gonna go from maximum to maximum. So how many hours between two and 14? I could subtract and 12 is the period because the number of units between high tide and high tide is 12. So B is two pi over 12, reduce that. I'm gonna pick cosine because this X value is at two. So that's gonna be the C value for my cosine graph. So I got amplitude, B to the right to midline. What is the depth of the water at 8 a.m.? So eight is our X. I'm gonna plug in eight for X. And to evaluate this, I'm gonna start on the inside and work my way out. So we've got eight minus two is six. And I'm gonna multiply these together. I get pi, and then I have to evaluate cosine of pi. So I'm gonna think back to our circle, our prior unit, pi is over here. I like a radius of one, so that left one up zero. Cosine is x over r, so that's negative one over one. Three times negative one plus seven gets me an answer of four feet. Mark on your graph in part A, all of the times the depth of the water is eight feet. So I'm gonna draw a line at eight. A horizontal line at eight feet. And it happens here here, 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 and again here. Graph one period. All right, so laying out all the information um, to be able to make my graph, amplitude is three, the midline is zero because there's nothing added at the end, no horizontal shift, B is four, which then gets me the period, of pi over two. So pi over two is gonna be the ending point. I need the halfway, so half of pi over two is pi over four. I need another halfway, so half of a fourth is an eighth. And then I need one more quarter here. So I'm gonna count it out. This is one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, so this point would be three pi over eight. We have an amplitude of three. And cosine reflected, this is reflection over the x-axis. I'm gonna start at a minimum, middle, maximum, middle, Minimum. And turn those endpoints back around. All right, sine graph here, amplitude is two, midline is up three, no horizontal shift. B is eight, so period is two pi over eight which is now pi over four. So this horizontal dilation of eight is making it so that I have eight waves where I would normally have one. So normally I'd have one wave out to two pi. Now I'm gonna have eight of them because pi over four is the end point, but I'm not gonna squish that in. I'm gonna put the end of my scale as pi over four halfway 
Nope. Half of four is going to be pi over eight. It's like multiplying by a half. So pi over four times a half is pi over eight. Halfway again. And I'm going to count it out. One sixteenth, two sixteenths, three sixteenths, four sixteenths. Midline is three. So that's my starting y value. Amplitude of two means go up two from there and down two. And the sign pattern is midline, maximum, midline, minimum, midline. All right, one more. The four in the front, that vertical dilation of four is the amplitude. Down four is my midline. No shift again. B is one, there's that invisible one here, so my period is two pi. Negative four is my middle. Go up one, down one. Oh no, no. Up four to zero and down four five, six, seven, to negative eight. Cosine not reflected is maximum middle. Minimum, middle, maximum. And there is our last graph. Make sure you can do the entire test review independently and confidently and you will be ready for the test.